dagger is uh, what I call a hanging grip, right? You can almost gather them. So the hanging grip is uh, also known as an ice pick grip and sort of modernized combative stuff. Uh, and this is primarily how Meyer uses the dagger. He's got a couple of other grips. Um, he mentioned a few times. I got it. Too late. <laughs> So, he's got a few attacks that he responds to with uh, an underhand grip, or a forward grip as I call it, uh, and he mostly uses this as stuff to do a defense of the game. He never actually advocates using this to attack somebody. And then he's got a third grip, which I call a half grip, and this is really fun, and this is what he uses a lot of the time if you are actually attacking. So we'll get to that later on, but right now, hanging grip, and what we want to do right foot forward as if you've just drawn your dagger straight up. This is the, the primary guard that he uses called the overhead. So overhead, if you think about it, it's like a, a high hanging guard with a long sword. It's very similar to the same thing. Okay? So again, it's done like that. And all we're going to do is make a cut or a thrust from up here down to our left side. Okay? And it's the same line that you'd make if you're attacking with a sword. Think about ear to hit on your opponent or whatever, straight down. From there, reverse your arm. So the dagger is pointing out. This is actually a, the side guard. Meyer calls it the Nevin hood, or the middle hood. You go straight back up, okay? And then we bring it down here. I think this is the middle hood. Yeah, yeah. middle hood, Nevin hood, doesn't matter. Anyway, so down here, this is again, just as if you've drawn the dagger, you're holding it above your waist. Here's the problem. Biomechanically, this is stupid. This will not work. You're going to end up hurting yourself before you hurt the other guy. And it's not good structure, it's, it's useless. So instead, my advocates using this as basically punching with the uh, guard. So bring that straight back up like this, up to your left side, and then down. Okay, so we just want to do that pattern really quick. So it's the first four cuts of the Meyer square with just a deck, right? Down, up, up. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, don't do this guy. And remember when we're making our attacks, just like we did with long sword and everything else, right? You're putting your hips into all of these actions to make it a lot stronger than just kind of going whack with our arms, right? So primary importance is keep the arm out straight, straight down, and as basically as little movement as you can put into your arm as possible. You want everything to be basically rotating from the So today, what we're primarily going to be looking at is defenses with the dagger, and especially defenses from the overhead. We're using the hanging grip. Okay. So um, what I want everybody to do, based on the view, we're going to have just partner up real quick. One person will have a target. The other person will be attacking the target. And I want you to just give basically ten or so pretty solid strikes to whatever target they have. And uh, vary them up from you know different openings. Try to do like quick combinations. You know, make make an attack and pull it before it hits, and then attack a different one just like that. So do ten or twelve of those. Yeah. Throw in some uh, pummel punches. Those are super cool. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do that. Again, this is sort of we're still sort of trying to warm up. So warm up. Person all the time. 
or at least have them sort of within each reach. So if you need to get into a guard or a posture to defend yourself, straight up, right up in front of your face, very aggressive. The idea behind this, I think, is mostly that if somebody's coming up, you know, trying to attack you, and suddenly they've got a dagger in their face, they might think twice about attacking you, and that's just as good as winning a dagger fight, if not better, right? Less chance of actually being attacked. Um, so the open is really important, not only because it's super aggressive, it tells the other guy, like, you know, if you come any closer, I'm going to stab you, regardless of what happens in between. But it's also really important because it's a really central place to intercept most of the kind of attacks that Meyer describes. And most of the attacks, like we went over last week, are going to be those really big, overhand, extremely telegraphed, very intentful attacks. You know, like I'm going to try to stab Jason Mason right in the big old skull right here. Right? And essentially, <laughs> this one works. <laughs> right? Uh, and this again follows a lot of social rituals. Very few people, well, you know, unless you're a high ranking official, you probably don't have to worry about being assassinated. There's probably not going to be like six guys waiting for you to walk past and just knife you to death in an alley. But if you're in a bar and somebody accuses you of cheating and they pull their dagger, like this is a very consciously constructed social ritual. So you know what's coming, right? And so a lot of this has to be understood in that context where, like, this is intent. Being up here and saying, I'm competent, I can defend myself, and if you come any closer, I'm going to stab you. Right? And that's essentially what you want. What this, this, the signal that you want to give if somebody's going to come at you with that. So it's also very, very useful because being in this position is very easy to defend from. So in this example, I get accused of cheating cards, whatever. <laughs> Jason decides to come at me, and I get this out. Right? What I'm going to do is just move my hips just a little bit and move my straight, extended arm, right into the path of the deck, just like that. And that's, that's step number one. So we're going to do that, like a lot. So if you, if you have, you should have something on your wrist, because this is going to, it's going to hit your wrist a lot, okay? And remember, when we first start, it's okay to go fairly slow and fairly controlled, so like, Jason and I come in, and once I kind of make this Bar. I want Jason to put a little bit of weight on it just to make sure that my structure is working, right? And then as you get more comfortable with it, then I'm going to do then, right? First, try to be comfortable, and then I'm going to put some heat behind it just to make sure, right? just to make sure that the structure is there, right? And so, sort of play with it, see what works, and see what doesn't work. And really, what we want to do is again, as soon as you shift your hips into this action, you want their dagger to stop almost. Okay? That's really imperative for the next action to get to work. Okay? Uh, masks are probably a good idea, especially if you're going to kind of work with possibly not having a pair in place. The good structure is like a brick wall, and the bad structure is it just goes right through your head. <laughs> More yeah, or less. Yeah, there's, really, there's not, unless you're going very slow, there's not a lot of play between good structure carry and badly structure carry. Badly structure carry is just going to right in the Everybody feeling very confident with that? Yeah. Yeah. All right, because we're going to work out a little bit more uh, for me. Mark, can I worry about that? So, actually, not you. It's going to be easier if I could have a So, uh, So, basically, there's kind of a, uh, an order of, of priority when it comes to a lot of this stuff, right? So obviously the very first thing that we want to make sure that we do if we're being attacked by somebody with a dagger is stop the dagger. That's priority number one. And it, it can take the form of a left hand carry or a bar with a dagger or whatever. We want to stop the motion of your attacker's arm, and that's what that hanging carry was for, right? It comes in, pop, I stop the motion of the dagger. Now up next is where pretty much all the tricks of the system come in. This is where like I either want to control her arm, take her dagger, or throw her on the ground, or kill her, right? 
And basically, once I get to a point where I can disarm her or throw her on the ground, I can make the choice to actually kill someone. Right? That's that's the whole basis of you want to control the dagger arm is essentially priority number one in almost any dagger defense. So, the hanging carry right, we stop. So up next, we want to seek uh, a way to control her dagger arm or disrupt her balance or structure. Basically, prevent her from being able to follow this up with anything else. So the next step that Meyer has, this is, you might all want to get a little closer to see it because it gets a ton of goofy if you haven't done it before, is what we're going to do is clinch with our dagger, between our dagger and our wrist. And the way we're going to get to that from this barring action, right, is we stop this, we're going to wind our point around their wrist, and once we get to about here, Pinch it really solidly between your wrist and the dagger, and then pull. Okay? So it's going to take a little bit of working to get there, but basically, it's one of these things that the slower you go, the less it seems like it's actually ever going to work. But if you do this at speed, it's extremely disruptive and very quick, and you have no control if you're the one being pinched, right? And so Meyer describes it as a pinch between your wrist and the dagger. So once again, it comes up, right? You make that parry, you have to do this first. If you don't do this, or if you try to like skip ahead to the next one, you're going to get a dagger in the eye. And then you just wind this around, pinch, and usually what we're going to do is that triangle step, that power and plank triangle step, back around the other side, okay? Um, for those of you who weren't here last week, I'll give you a quick show of what that is, okay? But otherwise, again, you make that first bar, bar, wind the point around the wrist, pinch, and then basically control it around, okay? Any questions? Does it matter which side they were attacking you from? Uh, for this one, start out with the attack from their right. Okay. Um, if we'll get to we'll get to the attack from the other side. It's just cool. Yeah. Okay. Super. So, we're going to start introducing some of, uh, I guess, like the skeleton of Meyer's system here. Because, right, we can look at, we can look at the treatises as just great big books of tricks. And some of those actually exist. So if you ever look at, like, Paulus Hector Meyer, who predates Meyer by about 30 years or so, Paulus Hector Meyer's book is not a, a system of combat. It's just a book of tricks. And it's really awesome. And they're really well illustrated. And it's really neat to look at that. However, Meyer is trying to teach you a system of defense, a system of fencing, a system of personal combat. Um, so the way that he does this in, in basically from the Dussac onward through the rest of his system, he, he uses what he calls precepts, and he's got five in data. The first one is something that we just kind of worked on, and basically it is, if somebody's attacking you, what you want to do is get over top of their arm and force their arm down. It's a lot harder for somebody to attack upward, especially if you have your arm over top of them than it is for them to attack down. So what we want to do is, is find any way that we can to get above their arm and force it down. So what we did with that one, right, was that we are in a position of relative weakness, even though our structure is good, right, is that I've made this defense, but I can't do anything than just protect myself. So I either have to go with my left arm and do something, or I need to get above his arm. So what Meyer does with that is just get over top of it, and bring the arm down, right? And so this is actually the very first, <laughs> this is the very first show, the very first piece or play that Meyer has in his dagger system, right? And it's essentially what we just did. The first half of it, get here, go over top, force the arm down. After that, you give him a strike with your pummel to the face, bring this back up, and then you kill him. <laughs> <laughs> right? However you can. So like, you can end this at any one of those points. 
right? So if, if Jason is just a drunk burger who's coming at us, huh? Oh, yeah, that's awesome. So, so if Jason is just kind of a drunk guy who's coming at me, right? And I make my defense, right? And I get here, and I decide, like, okay, you know, this guy, all I need to do is throw this guy on his face, then I can do that very easily. Ouch. Right? If, on the other hand, I think he's maybe not as drunk as he might pretend to be, and he's actually going to kill me, then I can bring this all the way down here, hit him in the face, and if he still seems like he might threaten or attack me afterwards, then I can kill him. Right? And all of, every single play in his old book has these little decision points that are kind of in there. Right? Once I get control of this guy's dagger arm, and if, if I have my dagger free, I can do whatever I want. Which includes either throwing them on their face, breaking their teeth, breaking their arm, or throwing them gently back into their seat, telling them to go home and talk to their mom. <laughs> right? There's any number of things. So, like, the whole thing is about isolating and controlling their dagger arm. If you can't do that, isolate and control them, control their left arm so that you can throw them on their face, <laughs> get a hold of their dagger, or whatever. So, one of the one of the first ways to kind of remember how to do this: get over top of their arm, force it down. So there's a couple of different ways you can do that. One of them is that very basic bar, sort of wind over top. The other one is even easier. If you start from like Nebuchadnezzar, and somebody comes and attacks you, you literally just put the dagger over top of their arm and force it down. That's it. So you can do that from either side. So if, again, we're in our overhood, let's keep it there. Jason attacks, and I don't make it to cover this. Oh, right? What do I do? So Meyer actually says, one of the first things to do is aim for the wrist with your dagger, <laughs> right? And that works, if you can get there. The other one is simply that if, if I miss with my bar, then I just get over top of his arm like that, and I just keep the motion going, get that free, and then you can kill him. Right? So all I want you to kind of practice, we're going to have some sort of limited free play. And what I'd like you to do is, if you're the attacker, attack either from just the upper right or just the upper left. Telegraphic quite a lot, and then again work with your partner and ramp up the speed as you're comfortable. Um, but what I want you to do is basically either decide that if you need to bar and get over, simply get over top of it like that, or like this, right? And basically what we want to do is just get their get over get our dagger over top of their arm and force it down. Don't don't really think beyond that necessarily. You just want to get over top, force it down, then you know see what what options you have. Chances are you guys are all, without even reading the book, going to do things that are literally written down step by step in the manual. Because that's how dagger is. It's, it's very easy. All right? Good job. Because basically, if, if I can get Cameron to this point, I don't have to do anything else. Okay. Oh, okay. But, so, like, what I want to do is disrupt him as much as possible through the whole thing. So, if I can just go, ah, like that, it he's not going to push him to the other yeah, side. He's not going to do anything. But if he's still a little bit in there and there's still some resistance, that's when I kind of come around like that. And then he's turned around more on that, right? So, precept number two is a little bit less intuitive and sort of a little harder to sort of figure out. But, the idea is that precept number one is all about getting above them and attacking. 
Precept number two sort of deals with what to do with somebody attacking kind of your hand or your arm, right? Um, so if a couple of people have already pointed out, right, if I'm standing up here, why are they ever going to try to attack your face or your, your you know, arm or your chest or anything like that? Because again, they have to sort of get past my dagger to do that. So what are they going to do? Well, they're going to do exactly what Laurel's doing, and they're going to attack my hand and my arm, right? And that, I think, is another reason why the overhead is something that Meyer really likes, is because I actually don't want to be my arm back here, because that means it's a lot easier, straightforward path to my, my precious eyeballs, and my throat, and my chest, and my stomach, and everything else. So I want this to be here, because I would rather Laurel attack my arm or my hand, because this is a lot more mobile than all of the other squishy bits in my body. Right? So the second precept is essentially that if they are attacking your arm, if they're going for, they're trying to suppress your arm, go underneath them, then get over top of them, then suppress their arm down and attack their face. Alternatively, you ignore their arm completely, get around, around them, and attack their face or hand. Right? And it basically depends on what they do. So this one is essentially, you use a, just a void, just a basic void of any kind, whether that's just dropping your arm, or moving your body or stepping out. Uh, this is very similar to last week when we did uh, um Schlüssel, right? Is that the first action isn't even necessarily making that warding action with the arm, it's making a step out. Once I make a step out, then I can control the arm, and then I can do something else really mean, right? So the second one is, is we're not gonna spend too much time on it because it's honestly the least useful of all the presets. But essentially, if you're out in overhead and they are attacking your arm, Right? That gives you basically a free moment of time where you can get underneath them, come back over top, and then attack their squishy bits as best you can. Okay? So, yeah. <laughs> so the same kind of thing is like sort of limited free play, right? Um, we're going to have a defender basically in overhead, and what you want to do is essentially void however you can, and when you're the attacker, right, make sure you let them know, this is a good time for math, make sure you let them know that if their void doesn't work, like, Hit it. Not hard, but just you want to make sure that this stuff works, right? So if I just if I think that I'm like, yeah, I can just do this, <laughs> right? <laughs> and it doesn't work, make sure you let them know that it doesn't work, right? But yeah, so just kind of you want to get over top of it, and you can do that by just kind of denying them any control of your arm at first, then basically precept number one, suppress their arm or attack it. Basically, we're just going to kind of continue with this sort of free flowing type of thing. So, I'm going to give you the last precept so that you can sort of utilize all of the tools that we have so far. All right? So, precept number three is the way that Meyer talks about it is actually very cute. And he says, always remember to bring your left hand in to help your right hand. Right? Because Meyer is a team player. <laughs> <laughs> so, essentially, uh, if so the people who worked here last week will come over and sort of give you a primer on left hand carries. But the idea is that if I have an attacker and she comes at me and I don't have my dagger out yet or whatever, I'm in a different guard or something like that, I can make a left arm carry. But rather than just doing this and being like, oh, okay, cool, I'm safe now, right? What I want to do is immediately do something else with the left with the right hand, right? So if I make it a defense with my left, I want to make sure I attack with my right. So if I make a defense with my right, with my dagger, I want to make sure that my left hand comes in you know, I've shown this to a couple of you. I want to make sure that I do something with my left hand. So again, isolate and control the right arm, or control the right arm, or control the whole body, or 
do something where I can work this into a throw or some sort of controlling or other discombobulating kind of action, right? So you can either defend with your dagger and then bring the left hand in to do something else, or you can make a defense with the left hand and bring the dagger in to do other mean stuff. Usually if you make a defense with the left, you just go straight into an attack with the right. But again, if you want to work in some choices, there's some really fun stuff that I can cover and show some of you. It's, I think it'll be fun. Okay? Alright, get to it. We've got one last thing to show everybody, mostly because I think it's super cool. Alright, so Meyer has two shows right at the beginning of the book. The first one we've already sort of halfway done. Or the first one we've done more or less all of them. So, um, Jason, since you're right there. So, right, so Jason comes and attacks overhand, right? The first shook in Meyer's Dagger chapter is you make your hanging parry wind around. Pull the guy down like this, either take control of the arm or not. And usually he finishes it with a strike with the pommel and then a stab. Right? And again, we discussed you can essentially once you get to a point where you've broken their structure and their balance, you can do whatever you want with them. Right? And that's kind of the asterisk on every shtuk in the whole treatise. And literally every shtuk in the entire manuscript is that if I hit the guy twice in two things that were supposed to be like provoking cuts, I don't need to do the rest of the thing. I'm already done. Right? <laughs> I've hit the guy, that's it. Um, so number two is basically, uh, we, we went over that before too, right? It's this sort of crescent parry, right? Where you miss that first um, bar in action. So you bring this around, and again, control their arm, I'm gonna do that. So the thing I wanna show you which is really cool is he says, you can do this from both sides, right? And what he means by this is, if Jason is coming at, at me from his left, right, and I'm in here, and I do the first shtuk, which is I make a barring action with my hanging grip, right? When I wind my, uh, my point around his wrist, that's just shtuk number two. That's all it is. I just had to take an extra step to get on the other side. And if he attacks on the left side and I get over top of it, right? Well, this is just shtuk number one, right? Mm -hmm. So like, those two are basically, they, they, like what precepts do they embody that we've talked about? Yeah, the first one is getting over their arm and bring it down, right? And it's very, very clear in both of those. Which other one? Control of getting your left hand involved. Yeah, so uh, you can do both of these with just the dagger, but it makes some, sometimes it makes more sense, you know, if they're, if they're still trying to resist to do things, to just keep your left arm, you're bringing into health, like Meyer says, right? <laughs> Don't let your right arm just hang out there alone. You need it for your fight. <laughs> Right? Uh, obviously it doesn't, you can do the voiding thing if you really want to add yet another layer of complexity, but again, I think that precept is a little, it's a little goofier than all the other ones. Um, I think next week we're going to do precept number five, and then we're going to save precept number four until later, because it's a little bit more complicated. But anyway, um, I want you to take the rest of the time, if you want, to sort of do kind of a little replay as much as you can. If you want more cool dagger stuff to do, just flag me down and I'll come and show you. Yeah, so.